Hello YouTube and YouTube subscribers. Um, today I'm finally going to do the species profile on the fathead minnow, which is, let me see if I can still remember it off the top of my head, Pimapales promelis. Now uh, the fathead minnow is native to uh, much of North America. In fact, they range all the way from northern Canada down to about Mexico. And um, their range is actually being extended by humans artificially. And I think they're even found outside the continent of North America also due to uh, human introductions. Now, um, because this fish has a really large range, it has a fairly large range of temperatures. But when I was doing my research, I kept finding that the recommended temperature is 10 to 20 degrees. I don't think that's entirely accurate for the entire span of the species, simply because some of them are in southern states and like in Mexico and stuff like that, where you would be seeing a much more stable temperature range that would be closer to high teens to the high 20s or so. And, um... There's also the pH range that was said to be preferred for them was 7, was about 7. Now the problem with that is um, there's definitely, some of these fatheads definitely live in acidic areas, others definitely live in uh, alkaline areas too, just because of that large range. So I, I'd say just stick to probably a pH of between 6 to 8 or so. Um, one thing is though, research has shown that fatheads, when they're exposed to water that's too acidic, is that they can actually not develop their characteristic large head they can see on these males is that their heads will be undersized and their growth will be slowed down and their eggs also will have uh, greater failure rates. Now in the fatted minnows, the females, like this individual right here, they're not as robustly built while the males, like this one here, are a bit more heavily built. Oh wait, that's not, no that's not a male. There's gotta be a male in here somewhere. And this guy right here, he's a male. Um, the males are more robustly built. Uh, this individual right here, he has scoliosis, which is a curvature of the spine, uh, which is a neck condition. Sometimes it might be connected to inbreeding. Because these guys are actually purchased from a bait shop. Not by me, but by my friend, who's, I'm taking care of these fish for him. Um, so, the fathead minnow in nature, it's uh, mainly the tritivore. And the tritus is basically rotting organic matter, mainly organic rotting plant matter that these guys feed on. Uh, they also feed on invertebrates. And I have seen these guys actually occasionally attack and eat some of these snails, but they don't do that too often. So, um, one thing good about these guys is they're very adaptable, and they very easily adapt to uh, aquarium food. Uh, these guys have been living off of shrimp pellets and uh, goldfish flakes, and they're doing pretty good off of that. But I would recommend that you tend to stick to a bit more of the uh, bit higher vegetable content, since most of their diet, I'm pretty sure in the wild, is even though they're omnivorous, they tend to eat quite a bit of plant matter also. Not just, they're not as carnivorous as some of the other uh, saprinids that we have in North America. Um, of the saprinids in North America, this one's definitely the easiest to uh, probably keep in captivity. Shiners, for example, are really difficult because they are prone to dying of shock. But uh, the fathead males don't have that problem. Now, because they got that wide range, I'm pretty sure the adaptability is pretty good. And the fathead males that you get at a bait shop are likely from the area that you are in if you were in North America. So you likely won't have to worry too much about the water parameters in that sense. Now, um, when it comes to housing, it's recommended you keep these guys in a group. Uh, you could very easily keep about 10 to 15 of them in the 20 gallon. As long as you've got good filtration. They don't actually need this additional aeration, but you can do it just because. But um, in nature, these guys, they're actually quite tolerant to low oxygen. And they actually do well in turbid water. And turbid water means the water is uh, dark, with a lot of suspended sediments. And because of that, Suspended sediment low in the water being um, slow moving, which is uh, they actually prefer slow moving more. The oxygen content tends to be pretty low, but uh, they tend to do fine. And also, these guys are more pollutant, pollution tolerant than some other uh, North American saprinids. Not that you want to pollute your tank, but they just are. So, because of those traits these guys have in nature, it makes them a bit more easy to take care of in the aquariums. Um, when it comes to housing, from my here, you gotta keep them in groups. If you don't keep them in groups, what can happen is some of the, they can get a bit aggressive towards each other, and when they become aggressive towards each other, what they do is they basically ram into each other. They don't bite each other, apparently, but they do ram into each other, but I haven't been seeing any of that behavior in here, simply because I got a big group of them. Now, one thing that's interesting is the fathead minnow is one of the few saprinids that has parental care. Um, during the, I think they spawn, yeah, it's either late summer or in the fall when they spawn, the males, they dig pits. And what happens is the males, They'll actually develop a purplish color and they'll get these uh, bumps on their heads and their head will thicken. That's where they get the name fatted from. 
and then the male will basically the nest that is built will be guarded by the male so um that's all i really know about the fathead minnow uh, i apologize for this uh, species profile seeming really delayed so thanks for watching please rate comment subscribe and there'll be more slides at the end of this video to provide additional information peace out